So I'm calling the May 15th meeting of the Northampton Housing Authority to order. Could we have the roll call, please? Uh, yep. Um, Chairperson Carney is not here. Excused medical. Um, Vice Chairperson Cancel is absent. Um, Commissioner Brooks. Here. Commissioner Richards. Present. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner Tarbot in Springfield. I guess I make warm. Thank you. Um, we moved the presentation of the third quarter um, 2023 financials to be given to us by Gary DePace, please. Okay, hello. I understand we have a short meeting tonight because it's just the presentation of the third quarter uh, financials. Um, basically for the 400 program, the 689 and the MRVP. Um, I'm gonna start by just making a comment on the consolidated expenditure report, um, which you have to understand, well, if you can figure it, we're three quarters of the way through the fiscal year. Uh, this is the report that indicates the percentage spent, um, so you should have that. Mm -hmm. And right now, overall, of all the non-utility expense level uh, accounts, we've spent 67.75% of the budget. Um, so we're actually still underspending uh, at this, you know, given that point. Um, so that, it's still good. I mean, we're, we're financially very good shape. I don't see anything out of line. Um, there is one comment I want to make that's a subsequent to the time when I present when I finish these reports on the 689 program. Uh, it, we noticed that in the month of May, there is a um, an expenditure in the um, capitalized equipment of 15,843. Now that was a replacement of the uh, refrigerator and freezer um, at the 689. I believe the State Street, Sharon, was it? No, that's Grace's house. Grace's house, okay. Um, but subsequent to me expensing that in our operating budget, uh, it was found out that we were actually are receiving these funds through a capital grant through the um, our capital improvement system. So for the month of April, when I did the financials, I reversed that back out. Um, and that's, that's now part of a mod project. Um, so there's really, that's the only thing that probably looks out of ordinary between the 689 MRVP and uh, 400 program. So with that, I mean, if everyone's had a chance to review it, if you have any specific questions, I'll, I'll entertain those. I have several, but I have, I'm trying to get to that document. Uh, I, I had them underlined. That's probably why I had migraines all day. I was watching this, going through this all night. Okay. Um, Am I the only one with questions? Yeah, that's what it, that's what it looks like. Okay, um, I, I don't, uh, uh, I'm trying to find them. So I'm having a little time with that. Oh, too much computer stuff here. But I was, um, um, between that and the annual plan, there were just some numbers that didn't make sense. I guess I have a question for you right quickly until I can try to find the other thing. I'm okay. curious, you, um, you, uh, how many other uh, LHAs do you work with? I have, I do um, financials for 26 housing authorities altogether. And we do, my, uh, my firm does the annual, um, the AUP for DHCD with approximately 62 housing authorities. Wow, that's a lot. So um, I see here on number 4150, and this is for the, for uh, nine months, four one five okay. zero. That's travel for. Yep. And so, what does that involve? The travel, sir. I wish. Uh, I, I thought I was going to see you at the uh, Naro board meeting last fall, and yep. uh, but I wish you would have given us a tutorial. It kind of makes me nervous when I get all these numbers. That's probably why I have a headache, okay. and I'm trying okay. to decipher and understand. It's nothing to you. I appreciate this, but yep. there are probably some people who have much more. 
uh, accounting ac acuity than myself. And it, I just want to know what I'm looking at. So I okay. would think that a tutorial for the board members and probably for the public would be helpful. And I don't know if you've ever done that in any of the uh, LHAs that you've worked for. I have, and I believe I be did some one for Northampton a few years ago, probably just okay. before you became a board member. Uh, we did an in-house kind of a get together to, to know what the what it entails in the budget. But the 4150 travel account, uh, every one of these accounts can be described in terms of from the document called the budget guidelines. Uh, they come out every year. Um, this, the most current one that we're operating on was, and again, their public housing notices, and I'm just gonna put it up here, public housing notice 2022-16. And, and within that document, and it's a, it's a huge document, it describes under account 4150, what gets budgeted there. Primarily 4150 is travel reimbursements for anyone using their private vehicles, and as well as if it's travel to, in which you, it sounds like if you went down to uh, the training down, or you went to that conference in April, that paid for the hotel room. Registration <laughs> comes out of 4190. Well, 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 well. Okay. This board didn't pay for me. I had to pay my own expense, my own hotel, my own travel, my own food. Uh, that was the, the one before. And then the one in April, I'm out of money. I couldn't even go. Okay. And so I know everyone, I was the only one there who didn't, whose LHA didn't pay for it. So I didn't, I didn't, I went to the other one I on my own expense. I mean, I mean, I think the board should have a policy, a total from the board as to um, who and how travel gets expensed, which I, which maybe you have. I mean, that comes to do with Jerry, the policy. That, that was a, that was an item that the board is reviewing. Um, and okay. we need to stick to the agenda. So this is an yeah. agenda so item to talk about. Well, um, I, it, it was an issue with, I, that's why I wrote it with travel. So I didn't know if that included training. If it was just from person going from property to property. But if it's that, I would have thought by now, I just got here. This is going my third year. This would have been already established. It would have been budget there. That would have been something common. Because as you said, you know, this happens a lot with all uh, LHAs that this is a part of it. So thank you for that. That was very helpful. I do okay. have another one. Um, it says in petty cash, I guess, I guess that's the administration fund cash, petty cash. That's a lot of money. That's almost what? You're, you're talking, not, it's not petty cash. You're talking account 4190? No. No. What is a uh, 1117? Okay. That 1117. Oh, not petty cash. You're right. Pe yeah. What is it? Okay, that's not, there's nothing in petty cash. If you're looking at the balance sheet, that's a total of the cash from up above, which is 781,000. That's what's in our checking account because that's on a balance sheet you're looking at. You're, okay. Right? Is this the one you're looking at? I did. Yeah, yes, yes, no, yes, sure. Uh, yeah, between small. that and pet deposit, it got all, they're very small. And so, I don't know about me, it's a little, I really need large things here. I, it's hard to read. So you said tenants, uh, accounts receivable. And that yep. is one, one, two, two. What, what's that? That's how much tenants owe us as of that last day of the month. For uh, real? June, this, in this case, it would have been March 31 of 2000. That's how much rents are owed to us by tenants. I see. I see. So tell me a little bit what one, one, two, three allows for doubtful account yep. rents. What does that mean? At some point, we write off bad debt. We have tenants that move out that owe us or we evict them uh, that they owe us. Um, so when we set up an allowance at the end of our fiscal year, we have a, what we call an aging of those accounts receivable. And we estimate how much of that we're going to lose. And that becomes the amount that we write off in terms of our expense called collection loss. And that's okay. on the front page of our front of our um Sheet line 46, collection losses. Okay, so all right. Those, those are the ones that are governed, but the allowance is what we set aside for anticipating us losing um, okay. at, during, at that point. But you can okay. see, yes, receivables are very important and they have gotten a lot worse um, through the last few years, but that's been through COVID. 
It's kind of like a write-off. Okay, then the other thing. Wow, interprogram do do two and from. Yep, that's a, this is a balance sheet item, and this is what what in accounting we use oh, wow. to balance our revolving fund. I don't blame every you. if my revolving fund. I hear you, Marilyn. Is a receivable. There's a payable in the program account. Okay. That's it's nothing more than accounting uh, between our programs. Okay, thank you. I mean, if we had the tutorial, I wouldn't be wasting time here. But then uh, on the fixed asset, is that how much land we have and how much we have invested in the land? That's number that, that's 1401. His, that's historic, yes, that's a historic value of our land that goes back to probably day one of when the land was purchased and when we uh, established the balance sheet. And then under the 1402 building and building improvements, that's how much we actually put into the, and that, those are historic costs. They are not fair market value costs. So what's the difference? All our projects. And where that increases is that when we complete a mod project, um, the cost of that mod project that went into that gets capitalized and put into our building and building improvements account. That's a lot of money. Tell me what is that? Is that 22 million? 22 million 617 514. And that that's the all that is his our historic costs that went into all our project that makes up of the 400 project, which are which are is the this all the 667 projects, the 705 projects, and the 200 projects. Would have been nice if I'd have a breakdown with that because when you see a figure like that, I mean. I mean, it's just like, well, what is this? What is specific? What did they do? So it's just, uh, it would have been- it represents, it represents the historic costs that went into our projects. Okay, then, all right, all right, I get that. So can you tell me what 2118 accounts payable DACD subsidy overpayment? What's that? Yep, we receive subsidy during the year mm -hmm. all the time. They, they send us so much money but we also have a point at which we calculate how much of the subsidy we earn. So at any given time, in this case, March 31st, of the subsidy that they advanced us, how much do we owe them back? And that's what goes into 2118. It, that changes all the time and it becomes a, um, a permanent number to our balance sheet at the day when we close out our books. And that is June 30th. We don't pay that back to DHCD. It just becomes an advance towards the subsidy in the future. It's like rollover minutes on your phone. Is that what you're talking about? It's kind of like when you do a tax return. You file a tax return at the end of the year. If you paid in too much withholding, you get a refund. If okay, you didn't like pay in enough, you owe them. Um, okay. the, and the then the other is, thing. Oh, the difference is we end up not, we don't have to write a check to DHCD to pay them back. It just rolls over as an advance towards the next year. Okay, that's perfect. Can you tell me what the deferred credits, tenant, prepaid rents, what is that? That's as of March 31, you asked me what the 1122 account represented. Yeah. That's an aggregate how much tenants owed us. And the tenants that have prepaid rents, meaning on March 31st, there are people that pay in advance. That's what that represents. Okay, because I usually pay more. I didn't know if you had the part that was uh, more than the budget, if there was a place where you put that. So that's nope. that's good that, to know. That, that does, it, we, we, every time we have a number there, uh, Sharon and the, and the office, they have a breakdown of every tenant that makes up the prepaid rents. Okay. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, so also on the revenue 3110, shelter rent tenants, can you explain that please? That's how much we've charged all the tenants for rents um, in, in aggregate. That's how much we charge. That's why- For, my, for the shelter to be in the apartments. Okay, okay, so it has nothing to do with the, nothing to do with the shelter. No, no, shelter. It's, called, it's just called shelter rents. Okay, thank you. And uh, yep. again, when I was looking at the travel and related expenses, some it looked like, like, 48 cents, you know, what is that number right here? Oh, I'm gonna get a headache here. Uh, 4150, it looked like 48 cents, $190, five cents, 14. Don't, don't forget that what's next to the totals over there is the PUM, 
that's per unit month. It, it breaks, it's some, this form was designed by DHCD and that's what a PUM stands for, per unit month. Um, an example is a good thing when if you look up on the shelter rent and you see that the PUM is $333.39. Well, that breaks it down to, that's the average rent tenants are paying for the rent, for rents at the Northampton Housing Authority. Okay, so also 4238 tenant organization, seems yep. like nothing. What, what will you mean? We, we, we don't have any tenant organizations, no LTO, there's nothing, no money, I'm confused. If, if, the, if there's no legitimate LTO, but we do budget that based upon the budget guidelines that DHCD gives, and they tell us how much we're supposed to put aside for an LTO if they are it, organized. And uh, Marilyn, so I hear you. Excuse me, point of order. I'm sorry, I was trying to hear you and someone was talking, so I didn't know if they wanted to put on their mute or what, but I, I, I want to hear you because this is very important. Okay. There's, there's LTO organizational regulations, and part of the regulations allow an LTO, if they're organized, to request administrative support from the housing authority, and that's what that line item would be used for. So there's one LTO and they had nothing in this property, so nothing. Okay, all right, that, that makes sense. I'm almost done here, so thanks for your patience. Uh, yeah. What is, uh, there was nothing in there, but 50, uh, 4715 housing assistance payment, what's that? Is that like raft? That's a, that's a line item used for our MRVP program. If you look under 4715, in the MRVP program, you'll see that that's stands, it's there. And that stands for housing assistance payments. Um, obviously our 400 program does not, we do not subsidize units to a private landlord. So there is not none. But in our MRVP program and our section eight program, we do have HAP payments or housing assistance payments. Um, and that's what that's, yeah. that, that, that is used for. Yeah, because I see at 4715 housing assistance payment, that's almost like $55,000. Yep. So is that all in the same? Uh... Yeah, I see. And then the 4715, that's like this 55,000. Yeah, still the same thing. So, all yep. right. Um... And that's, that's our MRVP program. And that's where we pay monthly to, um, I think, three programs under the MRVP. And that's what that's for. Okay. Live 155 is one of the buildings we pay residents from our MRVP program. Oh, well, thank you for this. I have one other question. Where do you put in here, say for example, the soda machine and the uh, washing machine, and uh, would that be petty cash? Where would you do that? And I would hope, because what I learned is that one person puts it, because you're getting quarters there. So where is that, the, 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 the amount of money that you have and how much have you gotten? Because I wonder if you have one person to sign it, uh, I receive this, this is the amount, and then what do you do with the money then? Okay, that's an internal procedure, but uh, I will tell you that we're not tracking the Coke machine. At least I'm not tracking the Coke machine separate. We do track the laundry income. Uh, and that laundry income is reported every <laughs> month as to the balance that we have and um, what we have. And if you were looking at the account to, I mean, the balance sheet before, if you look yeah. at account 2139, that's accrued liabilities, that represents the portion of the laundry receipts over the years oh. that's available to be used um, by the board. For what, what board? NHA board? NHA okay, board. yeah, I see it. It's about almost 6,700 bucks. So that's to be used by what board? The housing authority Our board. board for, Our board. For procedures, oh, oh. Whatever, okay. whatever you decide. But there is a policy that the board that might have been way before you have adopted for the use of it. In other words, it has to be tenant related use. That's what I thought. That's what I was yeah. told. Yeah. Oh, yep. So. Yeah, I would have on that. All right. And um, so, and you don't have anything other than that travel. You don't have anything for professional development for board members and staff. I didn't see any word on there. there. That's part of training. And I think we had, there was a training budget, but that's something that's 
administered through the board and your executive director. Okay, so, because yeah. I yeah I took the board finance you know with the Naro training. What was her name? Yule E W A L D. I forget her name. Nice woman, and so she said that usually with travel for professional development is pretty standard. Is twelve thousand for travel, and usually about twelve thousand five hundred for professional development for a board. That depends it's on what size the budget, but we we have line items, and that that you would take up with your executive director. Chairperson I don't see it in there yet. Yeah. Brooks, Marilyn also has her hand raised. Commissioner Richards. Uh, Marilyn, go ahead. Yeah, yes. Yes. I'm uh, sorry. Really, Finish, Joella. I, I wanted to, um, first of all, thank Gary for, you know, obviously you're just well, very well versed on our budget and it was great for me to hear. And I want to thank Joella for bringing up some of those points. It just seems to me that we do need a little special tutorial with you at some point, which would be great. That would avoid a lot of these questions. I think a lot of what Joella brought up, if not uh, new information for the old timers here, I think it's uh, uh, at least a really, really good uh, uh, you know, information to think about. So thank you, Joella, and thank you, Gary. Okay. Um, you're welcome. Do we, do we have any other? Yeah, well, um, where to go? Did you get this in correlation with the annual plan or do you wait for the annual plan next year to incorporate so, these figures? The, the, bu the budget process is not with the annual plan. What you're voting on an annual plan is kind of like a, a plan and a budget <clears throat> is something we're gonna get, get together and do. And I, I sit down with Kara and Jack and we look at the budget numbers depending upon when the, the budget guidelines come out. Um, last year, the budget guidelines for our fiscal year comes out, it came out in September. Um, that's when we get together, we present the final numbers and we move it forward. Um, but I, I think the board as a whole needs to know what their policy should be for travel reimbursement or uh, you know, training of board members themselves. Uh, of the process. And I'm just saying there's a few housing authorities I know that that have that where these these things come up, they are should be presented to the board and approved prior to anyone taking the training. And that gives gives us a number. I, I guess the example I would try to give is you have a board members, you have 10 or seven. I don't, I'm not trying to think seven. how many you have, but if everyone decided to say to go to every event you'd break the budget. So sure, there's sure. got to be some type of a plan to know how much we can reimburse and how much we can do on an annual basis. And that's I agree. usually done at a, at a policy decision. I, I agree. I, I agree with you completely on this. What I'm just, what I'm saying since the three years that I've been here, it's not on the regular, maybe because I'm a teacher. Point, I'm always point thinking. Of order, point yes. of order. Hmm? I think we're getting into an agenda item that we had had before and may want to resurrect, but this is training is not on the agenda for this item. Attorney O'Connor. I, I couldn't agree more. I was just about to chime in, Marilyn. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Tom's a member of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more comments or questions? Gary? I do. Gary, can I have your contact information, please? Um, the housing authority has it. I just don't want to broadcast it. Uh, to Tell anybody. us where you live in apartment you live in. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can I get that, Kara? His contact information. Chairperson Brooks, um, Commissioner Jones has his hand up. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Jeff. Um, I move to approve Gary's report. I second. Any discussion? If, if there is none, then- well, I'm that's... sorry, I was on mute. I just said, I think I had the discussion beforehand and I think it was really great. So, but because I just got the tutorial tonight, I don't feel comfortable voting, so I'll abstain. Chairperson Brooks, would you like me to call the roll? Call roll, please. Um, 
Chairperson Carney is absent. Vice Chairperson Cancel is absent. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Tarbutt in Springfield? Uh, I abstain. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Would, would three yeas, Commissioner Chairperson Brooks, the motion carries? Very good. So we'll move on to uh, the approval uh, now to what next? Tenant comments. Uh, tenants. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Okay, so I will call on the individuals who are identified as tenants first, and then I will go to um, individuals who I am unsure of who they are and ask if they are tenants. This is only for Northampton Housing Authority tenants and Section 8 voucher holders. There will be a public comment and a employee comment. Um, this portion is only for residents. Um, so the first person I have on my list who is able to make a comment is Angela Santanello. Please just have tell no me which, which building you're at as well, please. Oh, I have no comments today. Thank you. Um, the next person I have, um, there are two that identify as iPhones. You can unmute yourself if you are a resident. Um, and they are not, so I will go to the individual um, named KC. Uh, yeah, this is KC. Can other people go first before me? But I do have a few. Sure. Thank you. Um, the person after KC is named Motorola G Pure. Um, you can unmute yourself if you are a tenant. Yes, hi, my name's Al Shagnon from the Walter Savo House. I am just wanted to comment on a great meeting we had with tenants over the garden. It was a great turnout and it was nice to have tenant participation. Uh, I think we should have more of it and I hope we do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next individual who um, I believe as a tenant, phone number ends in 9394. I'm asking you to unmute. Hello. Hello. This is your, your name and your apartment. My name is Roy C. Martin and Butch. And uh, uh, 81 Con Street, apartment 529. Now, I listen to that whole thing by Gary, but I could never figure out now, if we have a tenants association and we get $1,200, where does that come out of that budget? Uh, supposedly it's put up by Northampton Housing Authority, you know, is what Gary had told me before. Now, I don't know, but I'd like to know where that $1,200 comes out of the budget. That's one thing. A second thing, yeah, there's a lot of good things going on. I don't agree with them having a garden out back out there because the acids that they use washing this building down are still going to be washing off this building and washing right down in out back. And it could uh, make people sick. I'm not saying it well, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, people don't want to uh, have their plants watered with something off the building. So, and with that, right, I hope Kara's feeling better. I heard she had a fall, right? I'm sorry for that. And I hope she's feeling better. And, uh, uh, you know, Butch had his words. Yeah, Butch had his words, and he said his. Okay, uh, I'll give you a good night. I'm, I'm thinking about running for city council at large. So I don't know for sure yet. Okay, thank you, people. Thanks, Have a good one. Thanks, Roy. Uh, and then Commissioner Tarba in Springfield, you have your hand up. Are you looking to make a resident comment? Yeah, you see me visually taking the board hat off? Yes. Um, I just also wanted to comment on the garden uh, situation. Um, I was in the meeting on Friday. I wasn't able to be there. I had a con uh, conflicting thing. So I went down there in the very beginning and it was uh, actually, I came back up and I heard laughter. So I was like, I know that's a good sign. So I do appreciate that. 
And the letter, I don't, is this letter that comes from you, Jack? I, I, I didn't get it at my door, but it was a very nice letter. I mean, it was just like, and we're going to be coming here on this, Grow Foods coming here on the to do the tealing on this day. And we'll, you know, it was just so good. And I think, I just want, I just wanted something to acknowledge that, we, you know, we got it right. We should have, you know, probably done this from the very beginning. And thank you for your feedback. And, you know, uh, coming together is a uh, wonderful thing. And I just think it is it is vital. And it's also part of our bylaws to incorporate tenants. They have they're the they're the they're the seasoned gardeners. I know nothing about that. So um, it is really the the mood has changed around here and. People are feeling pretty good. One person is still upset. So that's why I didn't know how it went because I saw the person and she was crying. So I was like, what's going on? But for the most part, people are pretty um, happy about that. Also, I just wanted to say one other thing. I was You're going to, talking? I got three minutes, right? Yes. Okay. Um, when I remember the time about the notification and what's friendly notice and not. I saw a letter from D DHC. I'm in contact with them a lot this week. And they had a notice and they put it, they wanted uh, LHAs to use it. And they said, use your letterhead. But then they wrote in bold letters, this is not a notice to quit. You're not being evicted and you do not have to leave your home. The purpose of this notice is to make sure you understand the amount of rent you owe to blank blank as your landlord and to make sure you're aware of the steps you can take to make sure you can remain a tenant in good standing. And then they wrote the letter there and it's just the sound of it, like your letter and your approach to residents. And it's like, we hope this letter finds you and your loved ones healthy and safe. I mean, here's a model for us to use right now. The purpose of this letter, so you get an opportunity to uh, determine your rent, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. That's how you treat, that's how you treat people. That's how you would want to be treated. So I wish that we could um, think about that and maybe incorporate it. I sent it to, Maureen, but I just got um, my new email. I just got the information here and I have a new tablet that's gonna be my board business. So I just got that today. So lucky I'm in this meeting or we probably wouldn't have had form, but I'd like for us to think about that. And then maybe also we need to explore the the rent due dates. Thank you, Joel. All right, guys, thanks. Uh, and then there's one other person just labeled as tenant. They joined um, through the Zoom app so they can unmute themselves. Um, do you have a comment? Uh, you're just labeled as tenant. Hi, my name is Dynasty uh, Macario. I live in Hampshire Heights. I'm just here observing the meeting today and I find it really exciting and interesting. That's all I want to say. I'm just observing. Thank you, Dynasty. Um, and then and then Casey, we're going back to you as our last comment as requested. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, I'm curious to know when the ACS, ACH rent arrangements will be available for tenants. I still find the key policy a, a bit troubling and um, I'm concerned that the gardening thing could not be handled by the authority when they attempted to throw a wrench in the works of the works of grow food and then it went back to grow food and they kind of did damage control and uh, that concerns me a bit and also that actions by the authority with tenant issues do not much take into account the tenant concerns and of course that tenants don't much tend the meetings is troubling and then when they file grievances or complaints that's when y'all listen so whatever okay that's all thanks thank you excuse me, excuse me jack um you also have one other person that's listed as citizen that you did not call upon i don't know if you missed that no i'm going to do that during public comment it's a resident Oh, it is a resident. Um, citizen, would you, are you a resident? Would you like to make a comment? Uh, citizen, you have the ability to unmute yourself. You're joined via Zoom. Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, Commissioner, Chairperson Brooks, can I go on to tenant comment? Sure, next? Go on to tenant's comment. Or staff, yes. staff, sorry, staff. 
Yeah. Um, are there anyone from the staff who would like to make a comment? There is. I do, not, we... I do not see any. And then we're going to go to the public. So okay. I do believe we have um, at least one person from the public tonight. Okay. Um, so Wendy Foxman, you are able to unmute yourself. Um, yeah, I'm just here to observe. I uh, know several of the members of the Housing Authority and uh, several tenants as well. And I um, just thought it would be interesting to observe. So I have no comments. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and then there are two individuals who are on iPhones. Um, if you are from the public and you wish to comment or citizen, if you're from the public, um, now is the time you can unmute yourself. Um, and it doesn't look like we have anyone else. Okay, then we shall, let's see, uh, move on to the executive director's report. You got to tell people how to unmute. Uh, yep, so I, um, with Kara out, I am going to read the executive director's report for May. Um, so we collected 87% of the rent this month. Public housing had 189 recertifications, all of which were completed. Section 8 had 63, 59 of which were completed. Um, our, our public housing waiting list still sits at 15,000 for family and 4,000 for elderly. Um, we had um, three public housing move outs, four Section 8 move outs. Uh, we had four public housing move ins and um, eight public housing or Section 8 move ins. Um, we, our maintenance team completed three complete rehabs. Uh, we collected a total of 510 work orders this month, 389 of them, um, which were completed. Um, and then the update on events, um, United Healthcare visited three of our sites for informational sessions. They provided supplies for arts and crafts. Um, the housing authority provided snacks and they were very well attended. A gardening meeting was held at the Salvo House on Friday, May 12th, in which we discussed relocating the community gardens to behind the building due to construction of the hotel, additional space based on the large number of residents interested in gardening, gardening and it was well received and residents seemed very excited. Um, Grove Food Northampton is working with us to ensure that the beds are, are finished before the end of the May and an update letter went out to all residents today. So ends the executive director's report for May, 2023. Thank you, Jack. So now we're gonna need uh, uh, a motion to accept the, the April, 2023 minutes. I will make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Then we shall- Oh, have... wait, well, sec I'm sorry, okay. something just failed. Sorry, is the discussion, you just said this is about the minutes, it doesn't include the uh, executive director report? Go ahead and you have something on executive director's report? Yeah, yeah, I just have one quick thing. Um, I just feel like there should have, uh, there should be a mention that, that you know, there was, um, you know, initially some brouhaha, which happens in life about the gardens. Uh, right. Tenants were very upset about it, but we were able to work through that. Uh, I think I said that in a very positive way. So um, I think it feels a little disingenuous not to mention because there were a lot of hurt feelings going on, confusions, anger, um, and that work, we, work, we, we work through it. And I think the whole thing is I ask folks, please listen to them, come talk to them, come talk to them. And y'all did. And I just, I just think that that's how you, that's how we do what our bylaws say. Um, give people dignity. Okay. And then one, oh, that's, sorry. That's it. So do we have, did we have a motion? I had, I made the motion, do we have a second? I seconded. So now if there's no discussion, Chairperson I Brooks, I will go ahead and call the roll. Sure. Um, okay, Chairperson <laughs> Carney is absent. Vice Chair Cancel is absent. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Tarbutt in Springfield? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Okay, the minutes pass. All right. Uh, so we have no unfinished business. 
And is there any new business? Uh, we already did that, Commissioner. Okay, Brooks. that's all voted mm -hmm. on. Okay. So there's one final one, one final, final motion. motion to make. <laughs> I motion that we adjourn. Second. Second. Then it's time to go home.